Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone, to the November 2024 meeting of the Mount Jewel Borough Council. Um, as we always do, we will start with anyone wishing to address council. I would like to also add that at this time, if there are people here who have submitted letters of interest in joining this council, because we, we will be getting to that later, if you have something you'd like to say on behalf of that, um, this is also an opportunity to do that. So with that, I will throw the floor open to anyone who'd like to go first. Yes, sir. Um, I submitted a letter of interest for the position. Uh, I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, uh, I, I was on the sewer board for a short bit of time, just to refresh your memory, and uh, you know, I, I would like to further my understanding of politics as well as um, better helping the people of Mount Jewett. So I hope you'll vote for me, and thank you. Thank you. I was also on the borough one time, but it was brief. Um, the position was refilled. I was just sub in until they got somebody, but I am interested in bettering the community and helping in any way I can um, raise money and help development of just and inquire of things that need done around the around the borough. Okay, great, thank you. All right, uh, anyone else like to speak? Go ahead. I'm Jane Bernanke, and I also submitted a letter, and I would just like to be on the board to get more involved with the community and find out how things work and maybe help uh, some of my friends and family around town that have been coming to me with some issues, and they think that I have a great perspective on things and would like to send me in here, and so would I. Okay, thank you very much. All right, anyone else like to speak? Yes, sir. Uh, well, I'm sitting in the front row. I figured everybody would say something, so we... <laughs> Such a clean sweep. <laughs> yeah, I, I did not submit a letter because I don't live here. Yes. My uh, previous position was uh, another government entity. Um, and... Um, our Mount Tommy can help me with this one. Our Mount Dew Rotary is going to put up the lights uh, a week from Sunday. Is that right, Tom? Yeah. yeah. The seventeenth. Yep. And then uh, we're going to be doing the uh, light up ceremony. Then also soon after that. So I, that will um, be the Wednesday night before. Yeah. Uh, Thanksgiving, so yeah. that would be the 27. 27, yeah. So I'll just let you know about that. And uh, I am very glad that I can come to a November meeting and see one council member at least still wearing shorts in November. So. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it, that, sir? That's it. All right. Anyone else have a comment? Back row. No? All right. With that, we will close public comment. And we'll move on to the business portion of the meeting, starting with the mayor's report. Madam Mayor, welcome back. Hi, everyone. Thanks. Sorry to be out of town. Lots of work travel with everything happening. So um, I just want to start with a couple of thank yous. Thank you to the Hilltop Heritage Coalition for a Trunk or Treat. It was a great success. at over 130 people, I believe, attended. So it's exciting. And thank you to the fire department for your help on Halloween um, with the road. That was very appreciated. Lots of kids out, so it was great. Um, <coughs> I um, I talked to Scott a bit earlier, just texting about the forest fire situation and talking about maybe I don't know. I thought maybe we could talk about in this meeting about um, you know he's pushing for a county wide fire ban at the time because of the forest fires that are happening. I think it's something we might want to consider in the borough as well. Um, if if not, you know Hamlin Township. I don't know what Jim what you all are doing, but. There are active fires, as far as I know, before Allegheny, right? So um, it's something just to consider and think about. So 
With that, I also reached out to Jer um, Jerry Recker at the county just to make sure we were all in place with our emergency plan. And I can, he needs a few documents from us just to get everything squared away with that. I, I didn't realize. Um, so I'll make sure that's all set. But um, I just wanted to reach out, you know, ahead of the cold season and with the fires happening just in case something were to happen. So a thought there. I also don't know if, um, Scott, we need any, like, updated lists for, like, if you all have updated lists on, um, like, people in oxygen and all that stuff. So I thought maybe we could get together and talk about that if that's something you need um, mm -hmm. ahead of, like, power outage season, I guess. Yeah, we have a list. It's probably not up-to-date, up-to-date, yeah. but I'm sure there's more people on it than we know. But uh, pretty much everybody knows if they need to come charge their stuff, they always come to the fire hall because it's a, it's an emergency shelter. Okay. Yeah, that's what I figured. I just thought maybe we could talk about that at some point this month um, with the winter coming. So um, that's mostly everything for me. I'm going to reach out to the Kinsley Bridge folks um, and try to, I, I mentioned to Teresa last month, but putting something in the paper about the bridge closure. Uh, I think people mm -hmm. probably just want clarity. I think it's closing like next week for the next year. So people will probably want some information on that. But um, that's all for me. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> Great. Uh, I'll make a motion to accept the mayor's report. I'll second that. Chuck makes a motion. Chuck seconds. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> yes. Yes, well, yes, sir. I was just thinking about this. And before, if, if you can, make a motion to rearrange the agenda. I just think we got three people in one opening before we go through this whole meeting. I think it would be foolish to just get somebody, the mayor's here, we swear the person in and we run through the meeting. Um, do we need a motion to rearrange the agenda? I'd like to... No, it's on the agenda, so... <clears throat> All right, I mean, I, I, I knew that. that now, and I personally like to make a motion to appoint Jesse Wagner. I'll second there's a motion on the floor to appoint Jesse Wagner, and it has been seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Roll call. We can do a roll call vote. Okay, Brett? Aye. Chuck? Aye. Tom? Aye. Jason? Aye. Chuck, or Frank, sorry. Yeah, sure. Okay. <clears throat> so, Madam Mayor, do you have the steps for everything? Yeah, I gave it to him. Yep. Should we address this at this time too then? Well, as long as those people are here, like I, okay, I, right haven't, uh, I haven't seen that letter. I heard it was done, but we've had multiple instances where people have resigned the day of and changed their mind. So I think it would behoove us to give her 30 days, think, make sure she wants to do it, maybe read it. Um, I haven't seen it. Well, this I, is the I person we just it. got it. And then if these two are still interested, there's a spot. Their letters can be on file, and anybody else that knows well, that's what, we have two. That's what I wanted to make sure I was made aware to these to those who yeah. are well, interested. In the, I think we ought to announce it if that's what she wants to do. That's what I'm getting at. I would accept it. Yeah. I, I wanted to announce we have received another resignation. Council of Blankenship has submitted a letter of resignation. It has enough, at this time not been accepted, but should it be accepted? Um, <clears throat> I haven't seen it. I heard whispers in the walk. Jim, we may concern as of November 4th, 2024. I, Robin Blankenship, am giving my resignation. I will no longer be residing on Mount Jewett, PA Borough Council. 11 4 24. Thank you. God bless, Robin Blankenship. I don't know how she was moving. She was well, the, was the wording was a little awkward, but that's how she wrote it. Did we resubmit them? No. no. We would we'll keep, keep We would keep the three names on file. We would file and give her, give her a month to marinate and make sure she's fine with it. Marinate? Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I never really gave anybody a month before when High Doc resigned. It was like immediate. I resigned once and they never accepted it. I think a couple other people have. And this was awfully sudden. I mean, <clears throat> so, Madam Mayor, you want to swear? Yeah. He's sitting right beside you, probably. Okay. I guess. Oh, he's got to stand up. Oh, okay. Come on up. I also have you, I gave you a borough coat, too, so you can review it and get familiar with it. Oh, and there's a residency thing in there. Yeah. He'll need to fill it. So I guess we're going to do a roll call. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jim, you're 
guess you just raise your Can right. you come out oh. here? Yeah, please. Sure. Oh, okay. All right. Raise your right hand and then repeat after me, if you will. I say your name. Jesse Wagner. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and obey. That I will support and obey. And defend the Constitution of the United States. And defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of this Commonwealth. And the Constitution of this Commonwealth. And that I will discharge the duties. And I will discharge the duties. Of my office with fidelity. Of the office with my fidelity. Okay, congratulations. You're sworn in. Thank you. If you want to fill out this. Right. You can get sworn in. Yeah, you get sworn in, and from now on, sworn out, right? So it's the consensus of the council that we do not make a motion to accept this resignation at this time. Does it matter, or is it we, we, we fill it next month? Or what? Well, we can. I mean, we we have, fill it next month, anyways. Well, yeah. we have from the time we accept it. Make sure there's 30 days because we have 30 days from the date of acceptance. When's your next meeting? The second of December. <clears throat> but if she wants to rescind it, it's over. So I might give her some time to cool down on it, but that's fine. I just wanted to put it out to the floor to see what everyone else thinks. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I don't care either. So then we'll make a motion to accept it. I made a motion to accept it. Yep. There's a motion on the floor to accept Councilman. Councilwoman Blankenship's resignation. Is there a second on that? Yeah, I'm going to second it. Right. Chuck seconds. I'll do a roll call vote on that as well. Brett. Aye. Aye. Tom, or Chuck. Aye. Tom. Aye. Jason. Aye. Frank. Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. That motion carries. I will put another post up that we're accepting. We're still accepting for another resignation. We thank Ms. Blankenship for her service, and um, those of you who submitted letters, we will continue to hold your letters for the next um, meeting, which is when we should be filling that seat. All right. I think with that, that resolves that portion, and we can shift to the maintenance report, the borough maintenance report. We accept the maintenance report. You got a question? Or, well, sorry, it's on maintenance, but uh, yeah, they're, um, up at the park, I had a complaint about uh, no bags in the uh, uh, trash can. No, for the doggy poop or whatever. Oh, okay. That oh. thing we put up there, I only I I'll get some order. Up there. But, uh, I didn't. I, I'll get some ordered. I didn't realize well, they were I think, out. Right. Talked to Rick this morning. He found some. Oh, does he have top some? Was <coughs> to that. Okay. Uh, but the big thing we got to make sure is they keep it clean. Or, you know, when mm -hmm. people are throwing those bags in that trash container, that it's you know, uh, taken care of. Okay. So I just wanted to bring that to council's attention because I forgot that we had that up there. So we, I did too. I never seen it. it. All right. Well, Chuck has made the motion to accept this maintenance report. Second. Tom seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Takes us to the sewer maintenance report. I'm going to call from DC. I wonder if it's somebody wanting to make a vote. I just called me too. <laughs> vote, vote, vote early, vote on. That's a vote for mine. So, anyway, <clears throat> okay, sewer maintenance report. Our uh, part time seasonal worker is was done effective Friday. Everything has been taken care of. The final mow has been taken care of down to the sewer ponds. All the equipment has been serviced, well, pressure washed and put up for the winter. Fuel stabilizer added. Uh, <clears throat> Everything is good as far as that goes. Uh, our new sensor that is down to the sewer plant when we the sewer pump station is working well. We had the power outage the other day. It called me no less than. 10 times to let me know that there was low levels, high levels, this, that, etc. Um, everything's going good there. All the plow markers are out for the winter time and uh, everything should be good. We've had no overflows or issues at any of the pump stations <coughs> or ponds in the last month. And uh, 
Everything's working good, no violations, uh, no bad samples <coughs> coming out. So, all we have to the ship. What's going on with the pumps? Pumps as far as? The ones that were purchased to put in the ponds. Those are pumps. Whatever they are. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't know how to write a mind reader. I don't know what you're talking about. Nothing's happening because we'd have to do $250,000 worth of electrical work to facilitate that. So that is rolled in with our potential PenVest funding that I'll get into when we do the sewer. <coughs> okay. It's a matter of voltage. That's what it's going to be. No, I understand that. It's just we've had them since August of 2023. All right. Uh, I need a motion to accept sewer maintenance reports. <coughs> I'll motion to accept the maintenance report. I'll motion to accept the maintenance report. Jesse makes the motion. Second. Tom seconds. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Upstate. All right. Borough manager's report. Okay. Um, I didn't cancel the sewer internet right now because they have a contract with them that has a $500 early termination fee. We only have two months left and that's filled so it would cancel each other out. So as soon as the contract's fulfilled, I will take care of that. Um, I sat down with, with Councilman or Councilwoman Blankenship and shared the figures and how I do the budget. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter now. Uh, Luke, yeah, um, went over it, gave her all the stuff that I used to figure it, all my papers that I use, the graph that I use, everything. Um, so I don't know. Uh, that's something you guys can address later. Um, I have received documents on all your packages from the McKean County Assessment Office. Um, they want to know if um, you guys want to have them still receive the ownership and address changes and forward them to the tax collector if you want everything sent to the tax collector and then she would take care of it all. So you'll have to um, motion in that. So if somebody changes ownership for somebody, um, their address changes, it would give it be given to the tax collector, hopefully, and not the assessment office. But seeing that they change everything with the assessment or the courthouse. So have you talked to? Uh, I have not talked taxes? to. This came and I called the assessment office because I was confused about it, and she said. Um, Basically, it's to have things stay the way they are or to have everything go, go to um, ownership changes would be received. <coughs> they would notify the tax collector directly instead of notifying the assessment writing. office. Yes, have you talked to uh, Dollar and CHC? I have not talked to anybody. This well, is for you guys to decide. Well, I understand, but I wouldn't want to just throw something on the tax collector well, without talking to her. I, I know that. I get that, but I, I, I sent it all to you guys, is, so I didn't know. I know it's up to us, but it'd be up to us, like, hey, Barb, do you want to do this shit, or we want them to still well, do it. So I think maybe we ought to reach out to her before we make any okay. decisions. Do we have anything about why this I have no idea. Changes? I have no idea. Okay. This well, is all I was sent right here. I don't know anything about it. What input, it's, I mean, what input would she have other than she said, just hear me out, because I, I'm, I'm trying to understand this. Would, would she be getting her information from our office or from the county? Is that the only difference as to where she would be getting her information? Yeah. It would go directly to her, and then she would tell the, the assessment office. Um, instead of right now, it goes to the assessment office, and they let Darlene know. Yeah. So... This is for um, change of ownership or address, so I imagine it's for real estate taxes. I think we have to get her to render opinion because I don't know nothing about her. Well, when do we have to make this decision? I don't. I didn't. She didn't give me a. What you guys have is what I got. Okay. There's no date on it. I think we have to reach out to the tax collector and make sure, because maybe she'd be like, oh, that would make my job so much easier if I had it first and sent it to them. But I don't know what she does. You know what I mean? Maybe it would be 
or is it going to be more work because it's all going to be coming on her? Well, then if it doesn't get changed, it's her fault well, instead of the saying. assessment office. Well, yeah, that's why we need to ask her. Because I don't want her job. And right it's now, if somebody has a problem, the they go to the assessment office. She probably has to do it. Yeah. So I think we reach out to her. No, no, no. She was just elected last year. So she's got three years so, left. She can reach out. So yeah. right, she can, we'll, we can reach out to her tomorrow. We got her number, don't we, Barb? Okay. I do. And we can figure out what we want to do in the center. So if she wants it that way, do you guys want to? Do you want to like wrap this yeah, up? If she right. wants it to go to her, you guys approve it. So we're not sitting another so, I mean, month with I, this hanging I out there. The question could be to follow whatever her recommendation is as far as which option. If, we're, if we don't care one way or the other, and our concern is whatever's best for her, yeah. then we could say whatever she wants. I'll make a motion wants, that effect. Okay. We support. I'll second that. Okay. All right, so Brett makes all that stuff we just said as a motion. Okay. Yeah. Chuck seconds. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. That motion carries, and we'll reach out to her tomorrow. Okay. Um, okay, um, I haven't placed an ad out. I didn't wasn't sure if you guys wanted to put it in the paper or for the old snowblower. Um, I didn't know if you wanted a minimum bid on it. I was thinking 100 or 150 <coughs> bucks. Put it in the front yard with something. <laughs> what do you guys want to do? By the time you put an ad out, you know, for something you might only get 300 bucks for, you're going to pay 75 or 100 dollars for an ad. And Why don't you just post it like on the Facebook page? And okay, do you want to put a minimum bid on it? No. Or you want to go for 20 bucks? Just whatever somebody's willing to pay because it's going to okay. sit back there and run anyhow. No. How long are we going to um, take bids? Be anything under a thousand dollars assessed by the secretary doesn't, doesn't even have to come back before us. Okay, do you want me to do it for like for accepting bids until the middle of right before Thanksgiving or something? Two weeks, yeah, two weeks, weeks? Yeah. or do you two want weeks? to wait till the first snowfall and then put it up? <laughs> Yeah, until we get a foot out for it in the middle of the snowstorm. Yeah, we're supposed to get yelled at by Tom for not shoveling their sidewalks. Okay. <laughs> At least two weeks. Put it up and then you take the highest, highest offer. All right. Now they should come in sealed, though, yeah? Yes. Okay, that's all I got. Okay. Motion accepts. Borough Manager's report. All motion. I'll second. Try to vote. Jesse seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carried. Take a vote for the minutes if you've not already done so. And then people start looking at the treasury report. And there's no questions. And payment of bills for the borough. We will start there.
Sure, I'll motion. Thanks. I have a motion to accept the Treasury Department Family Bill by Frank, seconded by Tom. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Please continue and move on to the sewer treasurer's report and payment of bills, where I will be looking for another motion. Is this all power up now? Yes. Yeah. Right. I just saw red. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hurry. Yeah. Three of them dropped today. So Verizon. Does he have a Are you with Verizon? Times? Yeah. <laughs> Does he have a call me seven times? It just cut, it start to rain and stop. And she said on her end it was weird. Yeah. Are the wind blew? He getting he getting in trouble? Start to close. That's what it is. <sighs> Question on the uh, sewer payments and bills, Alfieri and Alfieri, there, that was the uh, attorney that the sewer authority had on retainer. Is that their final bill? Uh, I believe so. It takes it through, um, I'm looking to see where it is. It takes it through May. Uh, May. May, so there shouldn't be anything else. Okay. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> Motion. Sewer payment bill. Second. Jesse, was that you? Yes. Right, Chuck made the motion. Jesse seconded to approve the sewer transfer report. Coming to bills. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Takes us to the committee reports. Maintenance right, of streets and buildings. Brett, have you heard anything as far as on the down here where the vehicle or truck went through and flat over or <coughs> like I know that they, I see uh, it's marked out. <coughs> it's marked out that's for the water company. Oh. The PA one call for replacing the fire hydrant, but that's yet to have. Oh, okay. Um we ordered the new pole and we got middle it middle of December. Middle of December. So anyway, my thoughts are I don't know, has Tom given us a price as far as it's already been submitted to the insurance company. For the for doing everything. Okay, put the yeah. new pillar and everything. Okay. So it might not be happening until spring then if it's right. depending on the weather condition. Oh. Do you remember offhand what uh, Tate Davis's uh, um, submission was? 69 something. Six just, thousand, just part of it. 6,900. Just this part of it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's a lot less than I thought it would be. Really? By the time you mm -hmm. take down, put that new pillar in, do all that. Right. Anything else? Uh, no, I think we're both still there in that concrete. Anything else? Did you discuss anything? That was because they already <coughs> took care of a lot of stuff on the maintenance. This past month's maintenance stuff, so <coughs> these three items. Uh, finance and insurance. I lost my second member of that committee. So. <laughs> I don't think other than budget, which we'll get to, nothing really. All right, personnel. I have nothing at this time, Mr. President. Community development, planning, and parks. That is nothing. Fire department. You got anything? Yep. <clears throat> uh, your house numbers are going up fairly good. Um, Brett did the last PA one call for the south side. We should be good to go on Tuesday for this week, and that's from uh, Division Street to Chestnut, and that'll finish up Main Street and all the way to there, and the whole south side will be done. So we're all done on that, except for Howard Lane, I gotta get the uh, number for down there, and that whole end's done, and we're gonna start going back. Um, another thing is I wanna put a burning van on for the borough because I don't like the weather. It's too dry. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got several big fires around the area. Port Allegheny, we had one today. There's here and there. <clears throat> I personally don't want to go chasing one. 
if I don't have to. Put that indefinite until uh, someone would hear otherwise? Is that your recommendation? I would put it indefinite until whether, you know, we get ample enough for a rain or snow flies. Yeah. Is that a complete ban or is it uh, like That's restricted what we hours or what? Uh, your, uh, what are your burning hours? I'm not familiar with them. Six to nine in the morning, six to nine in the afternoon. Okay. Um, six to nine at night on Saturday and one to nine at night on Sunday. I don't think that fire discriminates on what time it decides it wants to spread. So I think if you're going to do it, you might as well just do it completely. Mm -hmm. I think you should have it. I was just thinking, thinking, like, if it's six to nine at night, where we have our people in town. From right. six to nine in the morning, you're looking one to two people in town to try to, you know, and then you're also looking at your, like, Hanlon and Kane. They're all, they're all lacking that. But if we could let somebody, if we could let them do it at night, but well, we'd have the coverage. Yeah, but I think I think I'd somebody, somebody get confused, and then they'd be burning, and then you still got to go chase the damn thing. Do we want to? And now we hold our boxes for three well, weeks. Yeah, okay. it's the darkest is it's hard to find. Ban it all. Like I think people want to see it too. Somebody got a fire ring. That's that's not thing too. Do we like a barrel? Like if they're burning in a barrel with a closure on top. Yeah, but when you're putting stuff in and out of the barrel, that's when things gonna stay. Yeah, so I, mean, I almost feel like if we're going to do it, you just we do it. Have right one next week. Why don't you do just complete burning bear, be a bin weeks. until you feel it's safe to do anything else? Well, that's kind of let, us, let us know when you feel it's okay and we'll put it up on Facebook and lift it. So we're doing a complete... We'll do a complete... Complete all in complete all fire burning, right no now. burning whatsoever. You may have to put that in the newspaper too because a lot of people don't use Facebook. Will right. you please let me know one. when it's been lifted? Why yeah. you put it on the sign though? We can put it on our. We'll yeah, put our it on our we'll sign. We'll put it yeah. there for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, we could make a couple flyers and put them on the post office. Yeah, yeah. yeah. post office okay. or whatever. I'll just put it out of the post office. Like you said, rain or something comes soon. Yeah, I think everybody knows. Like, okay, we'll do that. Let's just do that. I mean, there's even yeah, just one that's not going to be away from us. That's so. okay. No, yeah. I mean, just let me know, and then I'll let you know when right. it's listed. So we're going to go with a complete fire ban until we lift it, and just get the word out as best we can. Teresa said she'd take care of making sure it's in the paper, as a public Thanks. service announcement. That sounds great. Yeah. We have to make sure that it's just for the Mountain View Borough, too, because right. they get calls and nope. text messages and everything else. They say, is this for us, and where are you at? Right. Town Township, but... No, it's not. It's not. It's up to them. And then uh, I have Tom to have another one for when you left it. Yeah. Unless so Jim okay. can help us out. Would we'll you talk to you guys? Yeah, I'll talk with Brad. Talk to Brad and what it is. Uh, I just know seeing the different times going by out there where the uh, Amish family area has a sawmill. Oh, yeah. He burns a lot of his scraps. We're going to have to oh, make sure yeah. he's aware He's of that. not burning right now because I can see his scrap pile from the road. But I, that, I mean, he needs yeah. to be. I will, I will reach out to Raven yeah. Collins. Yeah. I'll, I'll take care of notifying him of a complete burn ban until further notice. Okay. I'll okay. Gonna get a hold of him tomorrow. Okay. All right. Is that it for the fire department then? Yep. That's it for me. All right. Library? Library? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a uh, bad. Uh, book sale and stuff going. I haven't heard the results from it yet, but they were going to book sale during the fall hall. Uh, and I know I was in there while I, when I checked the electric for you for Jeff. Um, actually, had a couple people in there already at that time, but they were trying to move some of the books that, uh, to sell them. Okay. Um, and everything else, just pretty much general. I got to get materials ordered for those uh, storage bins back there for them, but other than that, everything's going on as normal. Good. Good. Uh, code enforcement, has there been anything happening on that front? No. All right. Sewer. <coughs> well, uh, Self and Barb had a, <coughs> a brief phone call <clears throat> meeting with Aqua last week. Um, it was probably maybe a half an hour meeting. It was it was a decent meeting. They're still working on their uh, due diligence 
nothing has come out of, as far as time frame or what's going on with it. Um, they may be working towards getting done with their due diligence by the end of December, beginning of January, but holidays are coming. Uh, one of the main things that came out of this meeting <clears throat> was our contracts. The one that we are supposed to be looking at and have for the Georgia Pacific and the one that we are going to be working on for Hamlin Township. The big thing with this is if we decide we do want to divest, and even if we don't, to make sure that these contracts are term assignable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if we don't have them assignable, it could put some uh, cogs in the or wrenches in the cogs for uh, divesting and or just say you can put it back to a sewer authority or what have you. So Barb was going to reach out to Thomas. I did. Okay. I did. I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anything back. Um, the other thing is, in that meeting, we had constructed that any sort of offer or correspondence go directly through our solicitor, and that way it would not be privy to the open records uh, request because it's not an open record, and that way we can uh, have executive sessions to hash out what we feel is in the best interest without getting disseminated and blown up first. Um, other than that, Pretty straightforward. I don't think we really missed mm -hmm. anything of substance other than that. Well, that um, way our solicitor is aware of everything that's going on, too. Yeah. We don't have to remember to send something. <clears throat> he'll it, get it first, and then he'll give it to us. <clears throat> and everything that we, you guys would want to talk about, you could do an executive session. Yeah, and they can meet with us in executive sessions, and then we can ask questions that maybe you might not feel comfortable with in an open forum. The other thing that came out of the meeting is we had talked about you know, that we're still looking into PENVEST funding and, and things of that nature. And <clears throat> they actually encouraged that and stated that, uh, you know, just because you go after PENVEST funding, say you get a lot of money and, and, and we're on the hook for 20 or 30 years with it, that money is transferable. So say we got, we put it out for 10 million, we got 5 million, we got a $5 million loan, and down the road it gets burdensome and or the council's no longer interested in running it, what have you, that grant slash loan would be transferable to um, anybody wants to it's not just Aqua, uh, PM or whoever down the road. So if we choose to go through with that, which we are still looking into, and I called Marty from the East Group and tried to see where we're at, and they had put it on the back burner, I said, well, get it on the front burner, we need to be looking into this, um, they they said, you know, we they expressed that we want to do this right if it's going to happen. We're not in the interest of anything happening quickly, just correct. So I don't see this being any sort of fast, you know, you give us an offer and, and something happens, maybe even in 2025. Um, <clears throat> the other thing was... I had talked to Marty English when I called about PenVest. When we had, Jesse, maybe you'll remember this, when we had dialogue with the sewer board about PenVest, the uh, area of affordable rate. He reached right. out to somebody with PenVest to ascertain the area's affordable rate. Kind of came back and asked if we had any outside people we sold to, which were bringing in with Township and Sargent Township, and we haven't got that answer back yet. If we're going to go to a fixed water rate or change the rate at all, it's my opinion that we get it very close, if not meet, the area affordable rate. Because if we're going to keep this sewer system, we're going to have to make investment. And the investment mechanism would more than likely be PenVest. That brings us up to the industry standard, the area rate, the area affordable rate set by not just us arbitrarily throwing out numbers. It's set by a board that, that reviews the poverty lines and everything else. So when we get that information, I bring it up. I know this is going to come up. A little bit later with the vacancies and the <clears throat> sewer rates and Frank already alluded to the water rates if we're going to do that the company that we have our our system for doing the billing that we used to have with a water-based rate the gentleman that owned it died and then his son died mm -hmm. so I made a phone call two or three months ago we never got a phone call to see if there's any support with that system so if we run it and something happens it's not going to be supported. 
So we might have to look into a different uh, billing software to be able to bill easily because everybody's going to have a different bill based on usage. If, uh, if we were to switch to a water usage based rate, uh, how long is it going to take to formulate a, a pricing plan and, and should that not be in place by, by January 1 or, or what are we looking at here? Does it it's always tidy around January 1 because say you decide to, because it's $44 a month and you decide to cut a check for the whole year, yeah, I'd love to see that, but unless we have the information and have a billing system set up and in place, I think it might be a little ambitious. Um, maybe we don't allow full year payments, maybe we only allow quarterly payments so that we don't get to that situation. You know what I mean? Uh, are we allowing annual payments, and, and how often, and how many do we get usually of that? To that? I don't know that we get annual. Yeah, we do. Okay, we do. There's, there's um, probably four or five people. Would, would it not be possible if, if someone were to make an annual payment and then we were to change over, say, in August or whatever? That money would it, still be there. It could be taken off their bill every time. Yeah, yeah, the bills yeah. as they come in. Yeah. So as long as people understand that, that if the system changes, whatever you paid will still go towards your bill. Mike, it might not go further. further. You never know. Okay. I think it's worthy of mention uh, that, that they threw, they, I'm sorry, Aqua put out some potential meeting times for us, and we, we responded, they responded, and, and we were looking at a potential meeting of the 11th, and then they came back the other day and asked to meet with Barb and Brett. <laughs> well, it was just Barb at first. But it was just me at first. Yeah, yeah. and I yeah. said, "Do you want it? Do you want me to get everybody?" And they said, "Brett." Yeah, I, so I, I don't know why. I, I don't either. And I, it's I typed everything deal. up. I mean, we I, talked I just, about. I, I just to think you guys. it's worth mentioning that they requested that meeting with with just a, those people involved, and so you know, it, it, it's an ongoing process that will involve various, you know, and there was three of us plus Barb on, on a committee, and, and we weren't included. And that was a two-hour meeting that got the, absolutely nothing accomplished. The November 11th meeting, to my understanding, is still tentative on, on the books. It's tentative. I got back to her and told her the 11th. I haven't got a time yeah. back from her, so. And, and we should also have a, a committee meeting probably around that time to discuss all of these things <clears> about <throat> moving forward. Um, uh, and about rates, stuff like that. I think uh, it's worth asking, you mentioned um, the um, Penvest uh, expected cost. Yeah. Do you have any estimates on that? Or uh, I'm waiting for an email back. <clears throat> Marty reached out to a representative with Penvest. The Penvest representative reached back out to Marty asking if we serve outside municipalities. We do. I haven't seen any further correspondence in New York because you're on that feed. No, I haven't. Uh, I haven't so got anything back yet. Is, is that a case where when Penvest has that recommended number, whatever it is that they come up with, to qualify for that loan, you have to have that number? That has to be your rate? From what I understand... You have to be at least at that rate. That's, that's at that it has rate to be at least that high, whatever it is. Grant loan ratio. They're, they're going to want to make sure that your debt to income is such that whatever you're sure. applying for, be it two, three, four million, you've got enough revenue to, to, to substantiate whatever the loan payment and, and that that will be determined by how much we're trying to get. Right. Either, either, you know, obviously grant money is grant money, but on through loan, low interest loan, you'll have to be able to repay that plus your continued operating expenses. And so those numbers are all going to be very fluid until at one, po at one point in time we say, okay, we're going to put in for X number of dollars for Penvest. And then, yeah. then and there's there some other, you know, things that we cover in a sewer meeting as far as, okay, if we're going to do this and we're going to redo a pump station, well, if you redo a pump station, instead of just upgrading the old one, you need to have a permit. DEP has 185, 89 days to get you your permit. They usually take 188 because so it's how they roll. Me. So it's all going to be time dependent or, okay, you know, if you want to rush it, you don't have to redo the pump station, but the pump station needs to be done. So, you know, you replace all lines, but you still have a bad pump station. You still going to have to do the permit. So if you're going for the money, you go for it. All right. Uh, anything else right now on sewer? I don't have anything. All right. Well, that moves us over to old business. Um, I, I finally signed the 
the thing for the, the five year plan for the more grant eco grant. thing. Yeah, that, that turned into I didn't realize it was, I thought it was waiting on them, it was waiting on me, and then. But anyway. we both signed and we're just waiting to hear from them so I can get the energy audit scheduled so we can move on with that. Yeah, so Grant. that's plugging along. Um, Sister City. Chuck, we probably should just have another meeting with that gal um, from the Sister City program, uh, if that makes sense to you. I don't know. <coughs> I'm, I'm going to suggest that we, that we go uh, shift gears and, and go a different route and, and possibly uh, ask for the involvement of uh, perhaps the library, the Swedish Festival Committee, because we, we've, gone, we've gone nowhere with this. And, and, and I understand why we haven't, but that doesn't mean that it can't. Um, I'm not sure what, where I want to go. I, I'd like to talk to uh, Courtney at the library and, and maybe uh, Leslie and, and, and see if, if there's enough interest to put a coalition together to make a more consorted effort on. I, 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 think, it, I think it's a tremendous viable project that, that will really benefit the borough short term and long term. I, I'm just not quite sure how to proceed right now. Yeah, the last time I talked to Karen Olson, she said that the number one problem with a small town in Sweden, like we talked about, is that they don't speak English. And that's one thing. I mean, there's a lot of different things. Yeah. We had, I did talk to Karen about it, but we can, I think it's fine if we want to sit down with Courtney and Leslie. I think that's really I, fine. I'm yeah. just throwing that out there yeah. as a suggestion, as an idea. Yeah, and, I, I, yeah, and I think another, I think we could do that, and I think if you're interested, we could talk to the, the lady from the okay. organization, too, just right. to see if they have any, you know, official help for us. So. Okay. All right, uh, policy for contacting a solicitor. I did reach out to our solicitor. Um, there is nothing that says we can't have a policy, but we also can't restrict access to the solicitor, uh, which obviously was never our intention in the first place. It's just a matter of how to manage that so it's most responsible for taxpayers and it isn't asking questions that don't need to be asked or asking the same question multiple times from different council people. So what he expressed to me is he is willing to work with us on coming up with a policy that we're comfortable with, whether that is um, if someone reaches out to him, he then turns around and communicates with the president about what that was and then decide how to go forward from there. Or we could set up a funnel system here where it's like we're not, we're not stopping communications, but we're filtering communications. So they're still going with it to the solicitor if that's the desire of whoever, um, but it's, at least there's one entity, or our president, or our manager, or both, that is aware of all communications going to the lawyer, so that it's a cleaner process. And he's open to whatever we come up with. So was he going to draft up something, or in, in, uh, of his suggestion to us, or, uh, or he he didn't he offered <clears throat> a couple ideas, but he said he doesn't he doesn't necessarily have a policy that he could give us. Or it, he, he can, if we wanted one drafted up, I'm sure he could do it based on our recommendations or what we want to do. I'm of the opinion that any contact to our solicitor be channeled through the president and or and the, the, the borough manager, and if it, like filtered is a good word that you, that you used, and, and anything done on our own uh, without going through that procedure would... Would, would end up end up being the li the liability of these whoever made the contact rather than come out of our because right now it, it, just for general purposes it, we we put what twelve hundred and fifty dollars or twelve hundred dollars on twelve fifty twelve fifty and then he works off of that at what one seventy five an hour yes I believe that's what he charges excuse me I believe that's what he charges one seventy five an hour. And then, you know, however long he, he takes on the phone or, 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 or formulating answers or responses, then when it gets down to a certain point, then we have to send him another check to replenish it up to that, to that amount. And so, you know, there, there, might, be, there might be questions and, and comments and stuff going in that we're not really, we're not, we don't really know how much he is being spent until we get a statement and come to find out there's been, uh, so I, I believe our policy should, should be filtered through the president and the uh, and the borough manager. I have a problem with it being funneled to the borough managers, considering is the borough manager going to be making the decision whether to send it? 
I think the understanding is that the, uh, there, there's no such thing as an automatic no because you can't be restricted access. There could be communication back to say, hey, you know, like if you if you send something that you want to send to the lawyer and it goes to the, the president or whoever, they could then look at it and go, okay, they could talk to you and say, maybe we don't need to go to a lawyer on this one, or we have this answer here, or whatever, and maybe, you know, but I don't think there's, there's no intention here to try and block. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that her, I duties, make... her, du her duties are basically anything that's non-judicial and non-legislative. And if you're making a decision as to whether something goes to the lawyer, that's... She's not, they wouldn't be making a decision. They would be aware of it. And if, if, they, if it was something that... It's, it's however we want to formulate it. If it's something they think that might be questionable, then it might have to go before the, go before the entire council. Okay, Councilman Morgan has asked that uh, we reach out to the solicitor to find out what brand of toilet paper we should use. Uh, we, we think that's kind of frivolous. Well, and we know the thing is, uh, you know, the fact that if it gets emailed through the borough's email and it has paper logs says, you know, Councilman Morgan has requested that I reach out to the solicitor regarding us and such, and it has a log, and it has a file, and here's the correspondence on borough letterhead to the solicitor as far as, you know, Jesse Wagner reaches out, or Frank Ariano from your private website, your private computer that has no, you know, you don't have to have that information, you're going to have to divulge it, and we don't get to see it all. And then, you know, it can't compel you to give your personal uh, information, but things that are on the borough computer under the purview of the open records law. So, so it just seems yeah. to, to insulate. And I believe I suggested to you that we actually have um, emails that were specifically for council persons within. I don't respond to emails anyhow. Very so rare. we could always draft so. a policy where it is instead of an or, it's an and. <laughs> the president. And well, the borough manager. Oh, well, definitely. Or that communication. There may and then be... it could go through the official channels so that, like you said, <laughs> any correspondence with the lawyer is going through the well, borough's At the end of the day, address. the borough manager or the secretary, whatever we have, is a borough employee. And we've had a situation here where we had to terminate a secretary, manager, right. whatever. I'm saying it's going to happen. But if we just make the policy that this person can only reach out, and you're hamstrung as far as reaching out to the attorney, so it needs to be the you know president and this through you know the official borough computer or official channels and everything that is uh, printed out what was sent, what came back, and there it is. But I think we got to reach out to our solicitor as far as drafting something official in that manner. So, so the, the thing that uh, I would like to point out that I, I didn't quite understand, I remember this uh, being brought up last month even. My question is why, so I understand we can't restrict access, I have no issue with that, but my question is technically anytime we reach out to the solicitor, it's, it's, a, it's a payment, right? So shouldn't that be a motion? Like, wouldn't we have to motion well, to they, spend that money? The general charge is like three minutes per email. So, there's no, I mean, what's that come to? I don't know. Quarter's your email. 75, 100 bucks when you were emailing in regards to my stuff? 190. 150, 75? 190. 190. I mean, we, we already obviously motioned yeah. as, um, to have the retainer and have it on hand, so I don't know that there's ever been a policy where we had to motion every time you contact the lawyer. It's like when the guys go buy stuff at the hardware store, we don't, or, or the gas bill. It gets paid, the, you know, it gets approved in the financial statement. If you have a problem, you don't have to check. You know what I mean? So usually, other than the reoccurring bills, the bills aren't sent out until it's approved because you look down through and go, hey, why did the attorney charge us 500 bucks? And then you look through and go, who, who called seven times over what? Mm -hmm. you know, we used to have a council president who would call the BS, <laughs> and then we all of a sudden it's like, why don't we get a $2,000 bill? Well, he's talking about the glory days. So, <clears throat> I think we I mean, do something where it's funneled through the president or the borough manager, requests are put in writing, and every attempt to reach an outside conclusion via the borough code and or PSAB should be exhausted before we go to it. And here it is, well, the borough code states thus and such, and you send that to the solicitor and say, we'd like an interpretation. 
I know the PSAB doesn't like handing out any kind of information or rulings at least as legal far as legal statute. goes. Legal. Yeah, they're they're going to they're going to straddle the fence on anything legal. Yeah. they're, they're going to they're going to waffle. So they're more they're more of a that would be more of a waste. So it's procedural. It, it yeah, sounds yeah, like what we need to do is we need to draft ourselves how we envision this policy, write it, and disseminate it. And if everybody agrees with it, then we can agree to send it to the lawyer and have it written up and have a written policy that this is how we're going to manage communication with the solicitor for fiscal responsibility. It'd be nice to have a written policy. All right. So is that good enough for now? Yeah. Who and when are we going to have that draft? Who's going to do it? And when we'll, when, when I'll we'll start writing it up. If people want to shoot me their ideas, I've been listening right here. I don't know. Uh, it will be an email chain that includes everybody, okay. including Barb, on all of us. Um, I'll need your email. And uh, corrections, thoughts, and, and I would think within the next week or two, it should be into as finalized form as we're going to get. And as soon as we're all happy with it, we send it over to the solicitor. All right. And then we can adopt it. Is that anything that needs motioned in the meantime? Or just well, I don't know. At the moment, no. We might need okay. a motion to adopt it when it comes through. through. All right. Very good. Thank you. All right. Um, that was policy for contacting solicitor new business. We've already addressed one vacancy. As we stated, we have a second vacancy, so existing letters are still valid. Additional letters, they have until our next meeting. We have 30 days to fill that seat. Um, it was accepted today. Georgia Pacific contract for sewer. You hinted at this, so we need to talk about anything more. Everybody got it. It's pretty straightforward. I think there was a minimal 5% cost, which is hardly anything per gallon to the... Um, 0.03 cents or something per 100 gallons. Um, <clears throat> just talked to Thomas about making sure it's assignable, and I don't know if anybody looked it over, seen anything that was not up to snuff on it. Say so we'll leave that for a couple of years. Should we wait until we find out how to make it assignable? Or? Oh, we definitely need to wait until you um, get it assignable. I, can I interject here? Your contract runs out with GP at the end of the year. Yeah. They're really stressing because per that contract, they can't release anything after the 31st of December. They still have to send this through their people. Well, until it's assignable. How about a short term? Well, well can't can you, can you could do a assignable and then right have now. them redo it. You know what I mean? Get can something in place right now. Now, that as soon as we have assignable wording that is legal, if everything else about it is acceptable, we approve it here. What was it, one year? I think two you guys years. went two, two. years. I think you guys decided two when I was typing I it up. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think one year is a little If we went with a temporary one, we still got it with the attorney. So it's going to take time, maybe a month. At least. But yeah, they have to. Yeah, but at least they won't be shut off. Well, last year they last year they sent it over to, or the last time it was done, they sent it over to them on the 20th of November. But I know I'm getting like emails from her like every other day going, hey, is this contract ready? Is this contract ready? Is this well, contract it is. Ready? It's not. I mean, it's, I like your point that it could be assignable as the verbiage, but if it's not, I don't know that we should go a full two years because that throws us into um, some sticking points where they could uh, <clears throat> reject our ability to divest if we wanted to. Um, do we have any idea how long it would take to get the assignable wording? No, because we reached out to the attorney a week ago. Yeah. I sent him to the beginning of the week. Is he aware right of after, when did we talk to her? I sent it to him Thursday that day. Or Friday. <coughs> Is he aware of a deadline? I'm trying to avoid a special meeting to vote yeah. on this. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I, I think it's okay as long as we get the assignable wording, but we don't get the assignable wording in Georgia Pacific has to be up against it or truck it for a month, or we get some sort of temporary uh, extension. To, to a ninety day extension. Can we do that? I would assume, but it's gonna we're gonna have to talk to the attorney. Yeah. If he's not getting back to us, it doesn't help us. So I I'd be okay with the motion approving it once we have the verbiage in place for the assignable, but if not well, why don't you just wait? Because I can't send anything over to them until after your next meeting. If we approve it and it gets the assignable on it, then you can send it as soon as the so solicitor puts the verbiage in. Okay. That's what I'm trying to get ahead of. So mm -hmm. if he gets it over to us in two weeks, they can get it sooner. Yeah. As long as it's, it has the assignable clause in it. 
Okay. Why don't we motion that uh, with that contingency and Barb uh, uh, reach out to the solicitor tomorrow and, and, and ask for ask for a determination and verbiage uh, ASAP okay. that, that it's, it's a matter of urgency. I would assume that little paragraph on there says contract is assignable to, you know. It, it shouldn't be that complicated. It shouldn't be. No. So, All right. So is that your motion then? Yes. Or Chuck made it. I'll Chuck's start. motion. Second by Brett. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that motion carries. Assuming we get the assignable <coughs> verbiage in there, um, it's approved. If it doesn't, it's not. All right, budget. We never had a meeting. Uh, we did not have a meeting. Um, I had a million things going on. But uh, no one called for a meeting other than me as well. And, Barb had no questions, are there? Um, so are we going to advertise or do we need, or do we want to not advertise? I'll make a motion to advertise it. Are there questions about it? Motion's on the floor. Advertise. Mm -hmm. I'll second it. Last time I had questions, we had a big blowout. So. Um, uh, last year I sat with you for two hours and answered your questions before the meeting. Yeah, then you pretty much only answered right, about half of them. Mm -hmm. I answered them all, Frank. Right. We're moving on. Brett and Chuck have made the motion and seconded no, to advertise know. the budget, and we'll do a roll call vote to have it on the record. Brett? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Tom? Yes. Jason? Yes. Jesse? Yes. You haven't seen the budget, <laughs> Frank. Frank? No. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, that brings us to the sewer policy discussion about vacant apartments with water still active and uh, something that came up fairly recently, so you brought it up. Go ahead. Well, basically, I'm just curious how you can charge somebody for services not rendered. Yeah, the water's hooked up, but if there's nobody in the apartment, how are they, how is it being utilized? We're not charging based on water, we're charging based on per unit. If the unit's empty, what if they decide you're going to remodel? rip the toilet and everything out. They're not using the water. But if they're in there remodeling and using all the uh, facilities and uh, we can't prove it because we have no facilities or policy in place to meter, you're not being charged for the service, you're being charged for the availability of the service. Yeah, we, have no way, we have no way of knowing if a, if a, if a facility is, is empty or vacant or we don't have anybody monitoring that and, and so you, basically it's strictly a an honor system to know whether a landlord yeah. has a tenant in there or not. I mean, is it possible to turn off that service? No. I think so. No. I mean, my apartment sat vacant for a year and nobody nobody knew that there was anybody in it or nobody in it. You get the, how, I, how, you know, I mean, that's strictly if you had to. Mine never paid, really sits empty. It's I've just something that somebody was brought up and it kind of sounds like to me you're charging somebody for services. It's services rendered. available, not services yeah. rendered. It's service available. It's, a, it's just like a minimum fee on your water, whether you're using it or not. You're not using the water. But if you. But you're charging the whole fee, the whole $44. Yeah. You're not charging the minimum. But we don't charge anymore, even when they are using it. So if we go back that to the water no usage. Sense. If, if you're, we go back to your water usage rate, there was always, correct me if I'm wrong, a base, a base rate, rate. Yeah. There and then it was usage now. above the yep. base rate. Yes. We just went to a flat. So if you have, for example, your, biz, your, your building up there, and you have nobody renting it, and you have water service to it because you haven't gone through the steps to shut it off, you will still be charged a base meter fee. And then if you go in and remodel and you're washing or hosing down or using the bathroom, when the meter turns, you're charged. We don't have that ability, so we don't know if you've got 20 people in there and then having a party and using the facilities or, or, or what have you. We don't. So our base rate is the base rate. Is it's, that's what we have. We have no <coughs> extra rate. I'm not disagreeing. But we're not, we're not we're talking, talking about an extra rate. That's why I said it would be very beneficial to go to the meter reading. Well, if anything, well, this is a further old. argument to move towards yeah. I, I, I meter reading. I completely reading. agree with meter I, readings. I, we should have never got away from it. No, we shouldn't. Yeah, but wouldn't there still be a, a minimum rate even if There would be. Oh, well, yeah. And yeah. even if it's empty, they would have to pay that because yeah. it doesn't access. Because even with the water, I think, what was right. it when we had it? $17 for the meter? Something like that per month. And then, yeah. yeah. And so, the sewer was the same way. Yeah. If you shut your water service off, we were notified, and then you no longer, because you technically can't flush because there's no facilities other than bringing a bucket in and flushing the toilet. But we could go cap your sewer. Yeah. yeah. The health department won't allow it. 
So, so even if we go to a water-based usage rate for sewer, there will there will still be a minimum rate unless the water is terminated. Yeah, so there'll be a minimum rate for meter. the building, not for each individual apartment. Unless you have individual meters, then in which that case, would be different. Yeah. And if they would actually put in individual meters, it would actually make people's lives easier. Yeah. When so I was in New Jersey, yeah. we had a meter just for outside, so you didn't pay the sewer for watering your lawn or filling your pool and things like that. Mm -hmm. All right, so a lot of different ways to skin it, but right as, now, as it stands, um, it seems like the sewer policy we have in place can't really be changed for the reasons of, or, or shouldn't really be changed. I say it could be of, changed, I don't think. It could be. I would, I would tend to agree that it doesn't make sense to change it because um, it is an access thing and we don't have a fluctuating rate and to charge someone zero dollars when they could be using it. When they could be using it. <clears throat> but when you policy, you state the customer and you define the customer as occupant. Well, the, the landlord is occupant if they're in there. Mm, no, they're not. They're not living there. They're the ones who are held responsible. They're held responsible at the end if somebody doesn't pay their bill. Uh, that's they a different story. You, when that was changed with the water or sewer authority, uh, that's why Brian C. being on the board, he pulled like in his building over here, he pulled his toilets right out and plugged them so that he wouldn't be charged. Extra EDU. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, which, which is all well and good. And you go up and you check it, and that was 10 years ago, and then you decide, well, what the hell, and I put this toilet back in or that toilet. We don't know, because it's not like I can right. kick your well, door in and go yeah. check out and see how many toilets you have. Yeah. So the verbiage might be slightly off as occupant or, or, or owner or whoever, but at the end of the day, if you own the facility and let somebody else occupy it, you're responsible for who's in there and you're responsible for the bill. We, we did tweak the wording on the ordinance for the street when we did the numbers, the house numbers, because they had the same issue where they were talking about occupants instead of property owners. Yes. Yeah. So we changed our wording because we did. the property owner should be responsible for that. And, and if, if, if we weren't looking at updating to more than likely a usage system in the short future anyway. Yes, and that's then I would maybe I recommend told you doing email that might like be a new point to even discuss it. Um, so that's where I think that because that's probably the direction we're going. I just um, think it'd be more beneficial to go to the water. If if we were to somehow decide not to do that, not to go to usage, then this would be valid again to bring up. Okay. If you'd like. But in the meantime I don't know that there's any point in addressing it. No. All right. At that, we're all wrapped up with the agenda, so we go to public response. If anyone out there has anything to say about anything that happened here, this is your time to do it. But it has to be on topic to what we talked about today. I you know I'm not public. <laughs> I changed just now. Um, I just I wanted to say um, I I have an issue with my um, house number. So my house number is 123, and it was put on Campbelltown Road. I have two driveways. I put your house number down there because of the you're not accessing your front. You can't access off of Route Six. Okay. Because um, when I was because the house in front of you blocks your driveway or your right, right, right. Okay, with their vehicles. Uh -huh. So you have an access off Campbelltown Road. And that's one we typically That's use. why I put your number down on that Campbelltown Road is because that's your access to your property. Okay. That, that's why I, I knew about that years ago. Mm -hmm. With the, about that, right, the, right. The, the argument that was there about that. And that's why they cut that front driveway off. Right, right, right. But I knew you guys put in that second driveway down on Campbelltown. That's why I put your, your house number down there. Okay, thank you. I, I was curious. I, I wasn't sure if it was an error or... No, it something. wasn't an error. It was more of a, this is how we're going to access your house. Okay. And not through the main drive where it was. Probably the only thing that I would question if, if I were in your shoes, uh, Mr. Wagner, is in the event of a 911 call, especially to an outside entity that is responding... They're not going to see that on Cushy Co Avenue if they're looking for it on West Main Street mm -hmm. or Campbelltown Avenue. I'm sorry, Duh, I live there too. I'm sorry, <laughs> they're not going to be looking for it on Campbelltown Road, they're going to be looking for it on West Main Street. But they're not going to be able to access this house either. But will they see it? Will they see it? No, uh, unless they turn down Campbelltown Road. I think you guys can talk about this after the meeting, yeah. 
Oh yeah, I can be figured out one on one. So that, if there's a better solution. Is there some way of, of putting an asterisk on that so that n the nine one one call center has it on record? Yeah, yeah. That's where they have that's that's where they access that's your house. All right, office. since since half council, half public has spoken. Anybody out here? No. All right. I will take a motion to adjourn. Maybe. Oh, he beat you. Brett, I'm yours is a second. Tom second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hey, right, Mr. Trussell, you're adjourned. Thank you.